Hey everyone, Diavolo here, and in today's video, I'm going to be going over each rule of Jujutsu Kaisen's culling game and explaining everything in the most simplistic form that we know about it so far going into the start of this arc. But before we get into the mystery behind Kenjaku's culling game, make sure you hit that subscribe button to keep up to date with the latest Jujutsu Kaisen news, reviews, and spoilers. And feel free to also leave a like on the video as well, as it really helps out with the algorithm and pushes my stuff to a bunch of new amazing people. But anyway, enough of that, let's get into this video. So with the return of Jujutsu Kaisen coming back from its hiatus on the 2nd of August, I thought it was a great idea if we decided to go over everything that we know about the culling game and how it works in the most simplistic form possible, as I've heard from a bunch of different people I know that they are still kind of confused on how everything works. So firstly, we will go around the pretense on how this moment has managed to come about. Kinjaku, previously known as Suedo Gido, Noritoshi Kamo, and Brain Kun, has spent at least the past 1000 years, probably a lot more, formulating this entire scheme. Initially, Kinjaku's plan was to kill the Star Plasma Vessel and the user of the Six Eyes within a month of their respective births. This was because the previous users of the Six Eyes had always appeared and defeated Kenjaku when he tried to kill the Star Plasma Vessel to stop the merging and instead forcing the Tengen to evolve into something that could resemble and be considered a curse. Because of the constant defeats, Kenjaku decided to switch to selling the user of the Six Eyes technique instead because there can only ever be one user of that specific technique alive at a single time. But something that was completely out of the control of both the Tengen, Six Eyes and Kenjaku happened. The Breaker of Fate himself, Toji Fushiguro was tasked by the Time Vessel Association to assassinate Riko Amanai, the Star Plasma Vessel, in which he succeeded, and suddenly one part of Kenjaku's plan was complete. Then again, fate intervened, and Geto, a user of the curse manipulation technique, fell into darkness and was presumed dead after being supposedly killed by Gojo. When this happened, Geto and his technique was taken over by Kenjaku, who implanted his brain into his body, and then finally, the final piece fell into place when during the Shibuya incident, he used the prison realm to seal the monolith of a sorcerer, Satoru Gojo. Now that we have the pretense on how Kenjaku has managed to get to this moment, let's go over the culling game, what these barriers or colonies are, and simplify the rules so it's a bit easier to understand everything that's going on. So, throughout all of Japan, there are 10 different areas that I guess have been set up by Kenjaku for this culling game. These barriers, or colonies, have been placed throughout Japan at key cities and locations in which the majority of its population is located. A barrier, or sometimes called a colony, is the area in which people must enter to participate in the culling game. People who are already in this area when the game starts have the opportunity to leave, but if they re-enter, they automatically accept participation in the game. These barriers are linked by connecting barriers, which people can travel through to get to other locations. Starting from the bottom of Japan, these barriers start in Kagoshi, and linked to Hiroshima, which is then connected to three massive cities all located in a similar area. These cities are most likely Osaka, Kyoto, and Nagoya. From here, the barrier then connects to the biggest cities of Japan, both Yokohama and Tokyo, with a total population size of at least 40 million residents. Then finally, the final last three locations are Sendai, Morioko, and Ayamori. There are no barriers in or around Hokkaido, as that is a so-called sacred land and is probably already ascended in some kind of way. The first rule of the culling game is, after awakening a cursed technique, players must declare their participation in the culling game at a colony of their choice within 19 days. Obviously, I think this is one of the most straightforward rules. People that have been marked by Kenjaku and have awakened a cursed technique like Megami's sister have a total of 19 days to arrive inside the barrier. They don't specifically have to state they joined the game, all they need to do is arrive at a barrier or connecting barrier because that's all you need to actually do to uh, state that you've joined a game. Any player who breaks the previous rule shall be subject to curse technique removal. This is stating that any of the previous players who have like awakened a curse technique must choose to participate in the game and if they refuse they will subsequently die through curse technique removal. Rule number three is that non-players who enter the colony become players at the moment of entry and shall be considered to have declared participation in the culling game. This is a crazy rule as it's saying that any civilians and sorcerers who don't realise that they've entered the barrier now have no other choice than to participate in the culling game and obviously if they refuse they are also subject to cursed technique removal and will die. Rule number four is that players score points by ending the lives of other players, which is another extremely straightforward rule 
stating that the only way you can gain points unless a new rule is made is by killing other civilians and sorcerers inside of the barriers. Rule number 5 is that points are determined by a game master and indicate the value of a player's life. As a general rule, sorcerers are worth 5 points and non-sorcerers are worth 1 point. So anyone who is either awakened or decided to participate in the game with a curse technique is worth a total of 5 points and a normal civilian, which Marky may even be considered as because of her lack of curse energy, is only worth a total of 1 point. Excluding the point value of a player's own life, so 1 point for civilians and 5 for sorcerers, players may expend 100 points to negotiate with the game master to add one new rule to the culling game. So either someone will have to kill at least 100 civilians or 20 sorcerers to be able to make one new rule with this game master. Rule number 7 is that in accordance with the previous rule, the game master must accept any proposed new rule unless it has a marked and long lasting effect on the culling game. So pretty much, there can't be any rules that will obviously affect the length of the game like cutting it in half or stopping the game now. No one will be able to create a rule to end the game along with changing any of the previous rules except for maybe adding a secondary point system that allows some kind of secondary way to gain points instead of killing innocent civilians and sorcerers. But the game master, who is still a completely unknown person, has to accept any rule that won't affect the integrity or the overall structure of the game. Rule number 8, which is the final rule that we've been given so far is that if a player's score remains the same for 19 days that player shall be subject to curse technique removal. So finally for the last rule it's pretty simple. For people like Yuji who don't exactly like to murder innocent people, if he decides to enter and participate in the game which is most likely and doesn't manage to kill anyone after 19 days inside the barrier or connecting barriers he will be subject to curse technique removal which will end up killing him. This will happen to anyone who doesn't manage to kill someone within a 19 day period. With the culling game supposedly being 2 months at least, people will have to kill a minimum of 4 people while defending themselves from a bunch of sorcerers and even perhaps civilians with guns that are trying to kill them. Now with the culling game and its rules simplified, let's move on to what I actually think Kenjaku's true plan behind the entire culling game is. So instead, I think the culling game is actually just a pretense or the start of what Kenjaku needs to do to begin the merging of the whole of Japan's population into the Tengen. The game will use the cursed energy of the participants who are inside the barriers or connecting barriers to start a ritual that will pass humans over to the other side. The other side can often be misconstrued to mean something else, but I'd assume that it means die as in someone passing over to the other side or crossing over. But like why would Tenjaku decide to merge with the Tengen when he can just use idle transfiguration? Well, remember Mahito and how Kenjaku has absorbed the curse giving himself the abilities of Mahito himself and as we saw extremely early on in the series, Mahito was able to bring out Junipei's curse energy and his technique through the use of idle transfiguration. Since Kenjaku has the power of idle transfiguration, why did he decide to not use it for altering human brains and forcing their evolution in that kind of way? Well this was because of not just a normal civilian's bodily capacity, but his own cursed energy as well that limits him. As Tengen explained, Kenjaku lacks the cursed energy to evolve the whole of humanity using idle transfiguration, and it is extremely inefficient to trigger the evolution of a single human at a time with the cursed technique idle transfiguration. This option that Kenjaku gives people of being able to choose whether or not they participate in the culling game enables a binding vow on people who decide to participate, as they willingly allow Kenjaku to what I assume most likely slowly sap away at their curse energy. This will then, over the two month period, build up enough curse energy so that he can start his merger with the Tengen and all of Japan through some kind of idle transfiguration will start to evolve and merge with the Tengen as well. But that, I'd say, is only the beginning, as the Tengen himself says. If humankind evolves, and if only one person rages out of control, the world will end. And this is what I think the true plan of Kenjaku actually is. As we know, in chapter 136, he says to Yuki, Do you understand? What I should have created was chaos that not even I could control. The Tengen continues on to say that there would be no boundaries between individuals, so evil would spread instantaneously, the impurity of 100 million people would flood the world. So you could say it's pretty much like Shibuya, but on a completely worldwide scale, and that Kenjaku's ultimate plan is turning the world into chaos through a mass culling, hence the moniker, The Culling Game. Anyway guys, I hope that I've stayed true to my word and simplified the culling game enough so that you could clearly understand what is actually going on. 
If I've missed anything or you'd like to add your own thoughts on the outcome of the Culling game and where you see the series headed, then be sure to chuck a comment down below and let me know. Also, if you are new around here and want to keep up to date with the latest Jujutsu Kaisen, Tokyo Revengers, One Piece and Black Clover content, then make sure you hit that subscribe button and also leave a like on the video as well, as it really helps out with the algorithm and pushes my stuff to a bunch of new amazing people. But anyway, enough of that, for now it's been your professional degenerate, Diavolo, and I'll see you all in a bit. Bye.